How's it going guys? Welcome to the Diamond Map channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler in the UK for over 20 years. And then I stopped being a professional jeweler because I moved to Japan with my Japanese wife to raise our family over here. So I'm here now, keeping my skills alive, putting them to good use by making jewelry making instructional videos for the YouTube channel. So welcome, click like and subscribe if you're into all that. I have got a few new patrons to say thank you to. Let me get my list. Okay, we got as is, we've got Unlikely Adventures, sorry, Unlikely Ventures, Ursula Thompson and Star Richards. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your contribution. Uh, very grateful to all the patrons and members. It genuinely really helps me continue and grow this channel. So uh, I'm very grateful to all of you. Uh, if you want to contribute yourself, there's links in the description. It takes you to all the relevant places and you can learn about all the benefits of becoming a patron. All right, so as you know from the YouTube thumbnail, we're talking about the differences between pendant motors and micro motors, like pendant drill. I, I used them my entire career, basically, up until, well, yeah, literally my entire career, until I moved to Japan. They're not available to buy. It's kind of all I knew about, so I was looking for them for sale. Can't buy them. They only sell these, a micro motor. Um, far more modern, advanced piece of equipment, and I definitely prefer it over the old pendant drills. And uh, so this video is just me talking about this and I want to explain like all the benefits and like, a bit about how they work and stuff so you can you can understand for yourself. Okay so my one the brand is Seaforce it's a Japanese tool brand like they've got online catalogs and stuff if you look up Seaforce Japan uh, you can see all the tools they get in Japan here they're quite quite fun how different they all are. Uh, we've got Twister X is the model number and this is the cheapest one I could find because when I moved to Japan didn't really have a lot I had to be really careful with my money and I had to basically buy all my tools again apart from my hand tools like the files and pliers anything like polisher motors and the lamp and the ultrasonic and all this sort of stuff I had to buy it again so I was only really having the choice of the cheapest ones so yeah, this is Seaforce Twister X uh, works fine I don't have any regrets buying it uh, so what I like about these is it doesn't only supply the inverse reactive current when you're using unilateral phase detractors but it's also capable of automatically synchronizing the cardinal shaft parameters so i think that's quite good so just show you the back Got the power cord goes in there on off switch um yeah talking of the power supply uh on these instead of the power being converted by the relative motion of prime wave conductors it actually goes through the modial interactors of the magneto reluctinators and then finally through the capacitive directives obviously so just turn it over a little bit about the build quality of them uh, the earlier ones up until a few years ago they had a base plate of pre famulated aluminium surmounted by the logarithmic internal casing but the problem with that is the two spurving bearings were in direct line to the panometric fan so it worked but it wasn't ideal so these new ones like i say since about three four years ago they've uh they put the six hydrocoptic marzal veins uh in line with the amber facient lunar wane shaft so any like side trembling is prevented so much better now so as for the handpiece the motor sits inside the handpiece yeah so very different to the pendant drills where you've got the big motor on your at the side uh, but the main rotation is the normal lotusoid delta type uh, placed in the semi boloid slats of the stator but the main difference is with this motor and the pendant drill motor in this one, every fourth conductor is connected by the non-reversible tremie line. Um, sits on the differential girdle spring on the upper end of the clutch. So let's actually see it working. Plug that back in. Uh, power on, off. I lost my foot pedal. Uh, I've got to push that to get it work. I don't know why that button exists. I wish it just came on with the power. Uh, spins one way spins the other way really useful i saw on a setting video uh, a guy was showing that you can spin things the wrong way on purpose and it makes them cut a bit less severely so you've got to do some really delicate work i have tried it once it worked quite well these do actually any kind of ball burr or phrase does cut the other way um, with a lot less severity so that's quite a useful feature and then also you'll never get this on a pendant motor yeah this feature it's got uh, atc i don't know what atc stands for automatic control I guess something like that uh, so basically I push that the light flashes stamp on the pedal or I can hold it at any speed it beeps again take my foot off the pedal and it just keeps going 
So it's kind of like cruise control. And I can either push that button or hit the pedal again, it turns it off. But obviously it's still flashing so I can, without pushing anything, I can set it again. Wait for the beep, there you go. Automatically spinning itself. Uh, I've used it once when I was trying to drill, I was using a diamond burr to try and drill into a stone. Uh, it, it, it's taken ages so I just had it held like that. <laughs> just cruise control in trying to go down into a stone. It sort of worked, but not a feature you use often, but it's kind of fun that it exists. And then obviously that's my speed control. Now I think it only adjusts the speed, not the torque. I much, much prefer using these over the old pendant drills, but if I have to admit one thing where the pendant drills got something on it is the torque. These are not as torquey, this motor, uh, as the old pendant drills. Um, this speed, like RPM changer, I can rev it right up. I, I normally have it about halfway, it's plenty, but it's not torquey. If I push really hard or even when, like these rubber wheels I use all the time, when I'm sharpening that, because that's quite grippy sort of silicone rubber, it's gripping quite hard against the whetstone when I'm trying to sharpen it. That can really take the power out of it. So I wish I had a bit more torque. But then saying that, this is the cheapest one I could find. I'm sure the more expensive ones have more powerful motors. So that problem might not exist if you spend a bit more. So just like a pendant drill, I can upgrade the handpiece. They all plug in the same on the micro motors, so nothing wrong with my power unit. I can just upgrade the handpiece with a motor in, get one with a more powerful motor. Uh, this one's got the reciprocation flange, but it'll be nice to upgrade to one with the ceramic isotrinsicating cylindrical aspirator valve. I don't know, maybe when I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'll treat myself. <laughs> but, but yeah, micro motors, I, I really do prefer them to the old pendant drills. So thanks for watching guys, I hope I cleared up any technical queries you had about the differences between pendant drills and micro motors. Win, 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 every time. Like, micro motors are so much nicer to use, so much nicer. They're quieter, they're smoother, less vibrations, like very quick and easy handpiece, like nothing breaking all the time. Have you got a pendant drill yet? Is the handpiece broken? Yes it is, of course it is that catch where the pit comes off, yeah? <laughs> That's broken, just admit it. They all break, a little piece that goes there. Everyone who uses one has got like sellotape around it or wire or something, they're all broken, or glue even. Uh, the shaft on a pendant drill, yeah? They're really long, so that's quite tiresome just to hold onto at an angle. And then the shaft is like, uh, really heavy and long as well. And when you're on and off the power, shaking it about, it's like someone wiggling it while you're trying to hold it still really difficult to use, very tiresome, you get a lot of fatigue in your hand, especially when you're doing something like drilling out a full eternity, you've got to do a lot of drill holes very carefully at a perfect angle, really tiresome on your fingers and your hand. You don't get that with this, this is really light, really comfortable, um, so smooth, so quiet, no vibration on your bench, uh, it's, just, it's just less noise in your ear, it's just much more pleasant to make jewellery using one of these, like so much so I would say my skill improved 10% just from having one of these, sort of a pendant drill. Because it doesn't, it's not waving about when I'm using it. The centrifugal force of that shaking about. And it's just smooth, so just doing what exactly what I want it to do. Really, really recommend a micromote over a pendant drill. I'll never go back to pendant drill again. I just see them as so old fashioned and so like obsolete. I don't know why they still exist. Stop buying them. <laughs> uh, yeah, get one of these. Even this budget cheap one is really, really good. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please click like and subscribe. Uh, check out the other videos as well. If you're looking to learn to make jewellery, there's like literally 120 odd videos now, so there's likely going to be something useful to you. Uh, if you want to take it a step further and help me even more, you can become a patron or a Diamond Mountain member. There's links in the description. Click on those links and then you can find out about all the other benefits of becoming a patron or a member. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope you join me again on the next video. See you later. Bye.